Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Gary Grote. I'm the executive director for the Greater Restore our Chamber of Commerce, and we're here for our for our seventh Real World Careers Meet the Professionals presentation. Uh, this is the the purpose of this uh, program is to connect students and teachers directly with individuals in various careers and industries to provide a background and pathway to a possible career in that field. And uh, it, it, this is sponsored by uh, Aurora Park, uh, Absolute Care at Aurora Park, our Chamber Sustaining Platinum sponsor, and Moog, our uh, program title sponsor. And with, the, with us today, we have uh, Daniel Dodge from, Dan is the general manager for West Her here in East Aurora. Uh, and Dan, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. And so we're going to talk about uh, opportunities uh, in the auto industry, career opportunities in the uh, auto industry. But Dan, give us a little background on yourself first. How did you get uh, to where you are now and involved with Wester? And what's your story? Oh, well, perfect. Thank you, Gary. First and, and foremost, thanks for the opportunity to be here today and be able to uh, maybe dive into a little bit about all the career opportunities that we do have available in the automotive industry and more specifically in the dealership setting aspect of it, because I think a lot of times individuals and young individuals don't necessarily realize all the different career paths that can take place inside of a dealership setting. So this is a great opportunity for us, but a little bit more about myself. My name is Dan Dodge. I'm the general manager here at the Western location in East Aurora. We have three different new car brands here in Cadillac, Buick, and GMC. Obviously we sell pre-owned cars as well. Um, I have been with Western now for three years. I've been in the car business itself pretty much all of my adult life, uh, not all with West Tur. Uh, I, I went to college in Michigan at a, a school, it was called Northwood University. It's a business school, and they have a program that focuses a little bit more on the automotive side of the business and a marketing program there. So went, got my bachelor's in business and then started in North Carolina with an automotive group where I spent about 10 years with them. So that 10-year uh, that time frame really entered the business at an entry level. Um, and again, we'll be able to discuss more of those career paths, but did everything from being a service advisor to a salesperson to a finance manager to a, a pre-owned sales manager to a new car sales manager to ultimately becoming a general manager. Um, ran a couple of different stores in North Carolina and now married with three kids. Um, Western New York is home for me. So I uh, ultimately moved back home to be closer to family and that family structure and support. And when looking to make that transition, I, I found the Western Automotive Group and definitely, in my opinion, the best group for, for me to join in this area. So been with Western for three years now. And again, uh, an amazing group and, and loving what I do every day. And uh, being part of this group here. So that's a little bit of my background there. Okay, that's great. Can, can you talk about the, the scope and um, maybe highlight a, a few of the, uh, of the occupations, the careers that are within the dealership? And, and also, and, and this would, what you say would reflect also in, to some degree, what it might be in other dealerships, although we're not, you know, but also maybe in independent service garages and uh, places like that. So some, it might be a little different in other places, but what you say, I'm guessing would maybe carry some weight throughout uh, those other, uh, other locations. Absolutely. So I am just in charge of one of our stores for West Hur and West Hur just being one dealer group has 30 plus locations. Now, the dealership setting from each dealership to dealership, even though the manufacturer will be different and the product will be a little bit different, the career paths and the job opportunities are gonna be very similar. Now, if you get outside of a franchise location, like you had mentioned, maybe even a, a, a service center or a smaller used car location, there are still similar job opportunities there, uh, maybe just on a smaller scale or maybe not. Uh, in locations like that, oftentimes you may have one individual that carries multiple positions. So again, what I have uh, as far as opportunities within my store physically here would be very similar across the industry, um, even though the brand itself could change and the product could change. So when you look at the car dealership, I, I oftentimes think that people will 
um, think there's probably two different major careers in the automotive industry dealership world. That is on the service side of it, being a technician, or on the sales side of it, being a salesperson or a sales consultant. So at the most core basic side of that, there's those two aspects. In reality, there's, there's 20 to 30 plus different positions and opportunities and career paths. So um, a dealership is composed of a lot of different departments. You've got your service department, your parts department, your sales department, your finance department, uh, your billing department, which is a, a little bit more of an ad administrative side. So when I think about collectively all the employees I have and all the different skill sets that they have, they're all so different. And there's just tons of opportunities inside of this for a lot of different career paths and what direction individuals want to go. So on the service side of things, uh, it's much more mechanical. You, you're dealing with the vehicle itself every day, a lot of problem solving, a lot of technical, you're, you're working, you're using your hands. Um, similar with the parts department and, and the technicality of ordering and shipping and making sure things are here on a timely manner. It's a little bit more um, kind of hands-on work in the, in the service and the parts department. Now, on the sales side of things, it's much more customer-facing. You're interacting with customers every day, um, you know, from greeting to figuring out what their needs are and how we can help them. You're consulting them through the process. Uh, to test driving, to finalizing paperwork, to ultimately delivering them a, a new or pre-owned vehicle. It's much more customer interaction from start to finish. So, uh, but back to the service side of things, there's coming in as a technician, there are programs that are available for training for technicians um, that could be done through some of the local colleges, ECC, MCC, um, even some of the BOCES programs, Alfred has a program. So there is training available um, or school that can be done to help someone as they're wanting to get into that field. Um, we have candidates that can come from that avenue that have a little bit of a, uh, a background or a head start when they enter the dealership world or, or an internship or getting a job that they have some of that background. Um, but at the same time, we also have some in-house mentoring. So if someone doesn't necessarily have any of that background and they want to enter and they want to be a mechanic or a technician, there are different levels of experience and technicians. So you could start as uh, an express technician where primarily you would be working on things like oil changes and tire rotations and minor maintenance where you would then continue to be trained. And then technicians move up through the ranks, ultimately being a, a master technician is what they often strive for. And at that point, you've got a lot of training and you're also able to work on almost anything fix almost anything and you're you're considered a master technician back then and now well, this can i can i interrupt you just a second yeah there? of course you know, i didn't realize that that i mean that in in house you have that type of opportunity that type of program and that's really interesting that you know going from, like you said from maybe learning how to do oil changes and and services like that and to work your way up the ladder with the, the kind of mentoring or apprenticeship kind of program into a higher level technician uh that's with, really, uh, go ahead yeah with with a manufacturer backed dealership there's always manufacturer training for the technicians and, and that's it's never ending because the cars are always changing and technology is always evolving. So um, if you have somebody here, there's, you know, monthly and quarterly and yearly different training requirements. And those training requirements can oftentimes um, kind of dictate where you are as far as a level of experience for a technician and what you have the ability to work on or fix or, um, you know, troubleshoot when there are certain things that it can, can occur. So technicians have um, incredible jobs and incredible careers where if we think about it, and including myself, a lot of times, if, if my vehicle made a weird noise one day um, or did something electrical that I couldn't explain or understand, uh, these are the individuals that they know how to troubleshoot that. If it does this, we got to check that. And you know what I mean? They've got the experience and the training to know here's where we need to look and here's where we need to go to try to fix the problem and vehicles now between the computer systems and the mechanical components it's amazing how technologically advanced they are and to think about the experience that's necessary now just to be able to work on those it's, it's pretty incredible being a technician 20 or 30 years ago it was pretty basic vehicles were, were very basic and I think a lot of people found themselves more qualified to be able to work on them or even change their own oil where nowadays there's so many computer systems and everything is just so advanced that 
um, even opening the hood on your vehicle or, or, or trying to change your own oil has become much more difficult. And that's why these technicians are so highly trained and, and certified in so many different ways to be able to handle and, and troubleshoot some of the problems that may arise. Are there, when for this particular, for a service technician position, what, what kind of person do you look for? I mean, obviously, you know, hopefully there, hopefully there's some educational background and training, but what, what do you look for in that type of person? Yeah, just from the education standpoint, it's really anybody from a, a high school degree to a college degree to even some of those programs that I had mentioned that that's great if there's a ECC or MCC or an Alfred or a BOCES program that maybe shows that they've got a little bit of um, time invested in learning. Uh, but outside of that, from a characteristic standpoint, we're always, whether it's for the service department or the sales department, we're always looking for somebody that demonstrates really a lot of our core values in Wester. And some of those core values are uh, urgency, and empathy, and teamwork. Uh, those, just to name a few, kind of give us an idea of the character of the individuals that we're looking to hire. Um, urgency being one of our core values because we know that no matter what a customer's needs are for us in this industry, if we come to that challenge with a sense of urgency, they know that we're going to do everything we can to help them solve their problem as fast as possible and inconvenience them as least as possible. Whether that's my car's broken and it needs to be fixed or I'm interested in a new vehicle or, or purchasing a pre-owned vehicle. If we come to that with a sense of urgency, uh, it makes for a better customer experience. So when we're looking for somebody to hire as a technician or, or really anywhere in, in the dealership setting with West Her, we want somebody that is going to be empathetic to uh, either their customer's feelings or their coworkers' feelings and has a good, good understanding of uh, what that side of it looks like, but brings a lot of urgency and energy to the let's solve the problem because that's ultimately what we do every day is we help solve the problem. Um, inside of that come a lot of the, the normal traits as well uh, between having a hardworking individual that is going to be reliable, consistent, you show up to work on time, uh, the teamwork aspect of it, always willing to lend a helping hand. If you have the knowledge, willing to kind of help the guy next to you and train and teach and coach. And if you're, if you're not at that level, we want to have somebody hired that is going to be able to ask the questions and be, be trainable or coachable to want to learn and grow and do more. So, right. I, I didn't mean to interrupt your presentation, but I thought that that was a, a point to bring up at, at that time. Cause I think I, what you said, yeah, no, I think that's great. Ask all the questions that, uh, that helps, that helps. Yeah. Definitely knowing what kind of information everybody's looking for and what um, questions that may be out there as far as, whether it's training, education, any part of that, definitely. Well, uh, what going to the next step beyond the service technician, maybe going into sales, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, before I even get there, though, I'll mention a few other things from okay. the service side of it. So from a, a technician standpoint, that's purely working on the car using your hands. Now, the service department also has service advisors. So if anybody's ever had their vehicle serviced before, you oftentimes know when you come into the service department, you're not necessarily deep speaking directly to the technician. Mm -hmm. So there, we have the advisor position. Now the advisor is going to um, handle scheduling, coordinating appointments, maybe setting up a loaner vehicle with you, um, taking down your needs. They actually write the repair order and then they facilitate getting that to the technician that's ultimately going to, to fix the vehicle. So the advisors deal with the customer in the service department. Um, and they deal a lot with coordinating logistics and scheduling. So that's a whole different skill set. Um, sometimes advisors um, maybe came from the service department as a technician at one point and decided now they wanted to go into more of the customer side of it. Um, other times individuals may just uh, know that that's what they like doing and they like being in the service department, but they also like communicating with the customer directly. So they're the, the the face of the service department and getting their vehicle fixed. They communicate back and forth on parts availability and timing of when it's going to be finished and they have a, a tricky position in it themselves so there's there's another career path there from the service side of it and then from there there's also a, a warranty administrator that helps claim all of the warranty work under the manufacturer's warranty uh, she handles repair orders she or he handles repair orders and facilitating all of the the claims that get sent to the manufacturer so there's another position in that and then there's ultimately a service manager that is over the entire service department who oversees all of that staff and makes sure um, customer experience stays seamless and everybody's training stays up to speed and we're servicing cars as fast as possible and getting them fixed right uh, 
the first time and, and as fast as possible and keeping the customer experience at a, at a high level. So uh, that's kind of the, the service department in a nutshell between technicians uh, ranging in all different experience levels to service advisors, to warranty administrators, to the service manager. Now the parts department is a whole nother department. Parts departments are oftentimes a little bit smaller. Um, that will entail a few parts counter men or women that handle ordering parts and that they will talk directly to the technicians on what parts might be necessary. They also can talk directly to customers if a customer comes in and just needs to order a part if maybe they're working on the vehicle themselves. Um, and then there's also the parts manager. So the parts in the service department kind of go hand in hand. They, they interact daily and work together on um, diagnosing what's wrong with the vehicle, getting the parts ordered, getting the parts here, getting them to the technician to fix the vehicle. Um, but again, lots of career paths there from uh, parts counter person to parts manager as well. So now when we move our way into the sales side of things, um, you know, just another department in the dealership setting, this is more the customer facing side. And this is where all the vehicles are, are sold, whether it's a new vehicle, a pre-owned vehicle, whether it's leased or purchased or financed. Uh, we have a whole different set of career paths uh, up here with the sales department. There's uh, sales assistance, which uh, is more of an entry level position if somebody is interested in being in sales in, in the automotive dealership setting, but maybe doesn't have any experience, hasn't done it in the past. Um, it's a great way to enter the dealership setting as an assistant to a sales person. Uh, that way you're getting all the experience every day. You're seeing what they do and how they interact with customers and um, what their day-to-day -day job tasks look like. And then, of course, we have salespeople, the sales consultants, um, help guide customers through that process of handling what needs they may have in updating or purchasing a new vehicle or a pre-owned vehicle for the first time. Uh, we have some support staff that handle um, our inventory. So there's uh, inventory staff that work out on the lots themselves. They do everything from parking the vehicles to making sure they're they're frontline ready, they look good, the rows are straight, they've got the pricing information on them, they've got the, the stickers on them, they've got the correct license plate brackets, it's very much merchandising. So um, there's lot staff that help take care of that. There's inventory managers that handle new inventory, pre-owned inventory. And then of course we have our sales managers that manage uh, the new car department as well as the pre-owned department. And then you've got myself as the general manager overseeing all of it. There are some administrative side careers with us as well. Uh, we have cashiers that help process payment from the service department and the sales departments. Uh, cashiers kind of double as um, greeters as well as phone operators. They handle a lot. They handle incoming calls. They handle incoming customers as they come in as well as cashing out any type of um, receipts or repair orders that need to be cashed out. And then we also have our billing office. Now our billing office handles the processing of all the paperwork and the transactions for when someone wants to purchase a vehicle. They are the ones that actually load up all that information in the computer system and they get all the paperwork printed off that needs to be signed uh, in order for a customer to consummate that deal or, or purchase. Uh, and then we have our finance department. The finance department handles securing the loans, um, pulling somebody's credit to see if they're qualifying for financing terms or leasing terms. Uh, they handle submitting all that paperwork into the lending institution to get the loan approved, if you will. So um, all of these little things that somebody might not necessarily think of when they purchase a vehicle, there's, there's careers and there's individuals behind the scenes that do all of those things. So if you've ever purchased a car in the past, you might think of your salesperson as the person that helped me buy the car. But in reality, May have been somebody different that appraised your car and somebody different uh, got the loan secure and then it was another individual that printed the paperwork and another individual that uh, reviewed it and then somebody else that signed it with you and all of those uh, individuals have different jobs in the dealership that help make all of this work so there's a lot of careers all over the place here <laughs> just at your location how many people do you employ roughly 80 uh-huh at our location here. And I say roughly because there are some that are part-time positions, some that are full-time positions, and I do even have some that are seasonal. So, um, you know, inside of that, there's some that are kind of, you know, it depends right. on at what point in time during the year. You know, during the summer months, I have some uh, seasonal staff that will come on board during the summer months uh, to help with certain things. And our winter months change a little bit when we've got more snow removal to deal with and, and you have to imagine if you've ever brushed off your own vehicle in the morning in Western New York when it has a lot of snow on it, 
we have to do that every day, but it's on hundreds of cars, not just one. So I think of that myself when I leave for work in the morning on some of those winter mornings when I've got to brush my own car off. And then I realize I'm going to work to have to brush off more cars in the morning. So, right. but yeah, but yes, there's a full-time, part-time, seasonal, lots of different uh, career paths as well, as far as maybe if somebody's looking for just part-time work, um, there's job share opportunities that we have for um, trying to make it a little bit easier to enter our industry if maybe you've got kids at home and, and your spouse also works and you're trying to find a schedule that works for both of you. Um, the old school mindset of I've got to come to work 50 hours a week or else I can't work in that industry is not true. We have a lot of different opportunities and flexibility inside of finding a, a great schedule and a career path for all different types of individuals. Can you talk a little bit about uh, and the how the, the fulfillment uh, in a person for these kinds of jobs that there is a, a value to it there is that personal fulfillment and gratification and and also there's there are well-paying positions too yes yes so i think there's so much fulfillment in, in the different departments for the service side for example to start with them and the technicians there's fulfillment in problem solving when you've got something tricky that is, has been acting up for a customer when you're able to be the one that solves that problem it gives you this great sense of fulfillment and joy and to know that um, you were able to figure this out and kind of diagnose it and get it solved. Now, the other part of that is if it is a safety concern, there's just, there's a lot of fulfillment in knowing that a vehicle is now leaving here safer than when it came in for our customers. You know, so many times we see a vehicle come in that there's car seats in it and you know, this is what the individual is using to carry their family around on a daily basis. And if that maybe is doing something that it shouldn't, um, we want to make sure that it is a safe vehicle for them. And, and when it leaves here, no matter what the issue is, it's going to be a safer vehicle. Now, oftentimes the service department consists of much more maintenance responsibilities and upkeeping your vehicle. Um, but there are always the opportunities for us to be able to solve problems for customers. And um, nobody wants a vehicle that is at risk of breaking down and or doing something um, that it shouldn't be doing. That's an aggravation for customers. So we're able to, to help them every day by making their vehicle safe and reliable driving down the road. On the sales side of it, it's very easy. There's joy inside helping an individual get their next vehicle. It's, right. it's so rewarding. Um, whether it's somebody's first vehicle, um, maybe they're a, a new driver and they there's so much excitement around getting that first vehicle. We can all probably remember when that was. Um, or maybe they're replacing a vehicle that they're really excited about now is the vehicle that they've always wanted. And, and now they're finally going to get the one that they really wanted. There's a lot of excitement inside of that. Uh, and sometimes it might be somebody buying their first new vehicle. Maybe they've driven vehicles for 20 years and they've always bought pre-owned vehicles. And this is going to be the first new one that they buy. So there's a lot of excitement inside of that. We have a lot of customers where we can actually watch them uh, progress through their life when they buy their first vehicle it can be a, a two-door sports car and then you see them get a little bit older and the vehicle maybe now has to have something that carries the family around or a better commuter vehicle for their path of, of career choice um, and then sometimes you get to the point where you've got now i've got three kids and i need something that can hold the car seats and you are watching them progress through life and what their vehicle needs are so a lot of relationships are created on the sales side with our customers. Um, it is not an interaction where it's just a one-time interaction. They bought one vehicle from me and I may never see them again. These are relationships that we create with people and whether it's we sell them a vehicle or help them buy a vehicle and then they come back and they service with us or you stay in communication with them from they are leasing this vehicle from me. That lease is going to come due in two or three years, and then we're going to work on their next one. And there's there's joy inside the building, the bonds and the relationships with someone and always helping them with their automotive needs and being able to solve any problems that they have. You know, hey, I, I've got this SUV. Now my my job changed and I'm going to need a, a pickup truck because I have to haul stuff in the back for my career. And we help them through all that. Here are our best options and we consult them through that. And um, there's a lot of joy inside that side of it, fulfillment for us. Yeah, those are really good points that, that I, I think a lot of people don't recognize, you know, at least in, in an auto dealership and the, the loyalty and the relationships that you develop with your customers is really important too. So there is, there's, there's something to be said about the excitement that people have and the passion that they have around vehicles. 
Um, even if you're not necessarily a car person, it's just always still exciting getting a vehicle. Um, you know, it can be nothing more than purely a mode of transportation for me to get back and forth to work. But when you take delivery of that new or pre-owned vehicle, it's still really exciting. So we enjoy being part of that every day and having customers have us help them with that. And um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What about just, I, I know you probably can't be real specific, but maybe a range of, you know, some of the different areas that you mentioned in terms of salaries and things like that. Yeah, of course. So to give you an idea on that, the the dealership setting has a lot of different um, range in pay based on position, but there's also um, different ways that individuals can be compensated. Everything from hourly rates uh, for maybe some of the more entry-level positions to um, technicians being paid on a flat rate, which I won't get into the details of that, but ultimately you're paid um, by the job that you're doing and, and whether or not you're able to complete it in the time that it should be completed. Um, and then on the sales side, there's a lot that's commission-based, uh, meaning the more sell cars that you sell, the more money or income that you can earn. Um, so hourly, flat rate, commission, there's a lot of different pay structures that consist of inside the dealership. Now the hourly staff, that can be really entry level and in some areas around minimum wage with an entry level position that doesn't have any experience, but almost always with uh, a path of growth showing whether it's in the first six months or the first year, to greater income as you're learning, training, and gaining more experience and doing a little bit more, um, all the way up to some of the commission-based positions where the, the, the ceiling is almost not there. Right. There are individuals within um, the dealership setting or the entire Western network, again, 30 plus stores from the Buffalo, Western New York area to Rochester to Syracuse, where there are some top performers just on the sales floor that they can sell three, four, 500 vehicles a year wow. um, itself. So you have to imagine if, if you're performing at that level from an income standpoint, it, it can be absolutely tremendous. And, and a lot of those individuals are uh, extremely happy with their careers. Uh, they like their schedule, they love their customers, they love what they do every day and they sell a, a ton of vehicles. And um, there's a lot of fulfillment in the, the customer aspect of it, but also in the compensation aspect of it. And it's a wonderful career when you can have the two of those meet, when you love what you do every day uh, and you earn a great income doing it. I know at your, the East Aurora location here, that you have a few uh, salespeople who have been with you for quite a while and who've done really pretty well. Yes. So there, there are a handful here at just my location um, that have been doing it 20 plus years, 30 plus years. Uh, my top guy here from longevity standpoint, just this past year, went over 50 years um, out of this location. Now, 50 years goes back further than Wester even owned this store. Right. So he's been at the same location uh, selling vehicles here for 50 years now. If you think about the amount of time that that is and, and what a vehicle looked like 50 years ago when he was still selling them out of this location, uh, it's just amazing. And it also goes back to my mindset of you are creating these customers that you're working with and interacting with for a lifetime. You know, he has customers that uh, he was selling vehicles when they had kids that were born and now he's selling their kids vehicles and they're adults, right. you know, and they have their own kids now. So, um, you know, from a fulfillment standpoint, he has this, this massive customer base of friends that he considers um, that he has just helped them through their entire lifetime and their families and their kids uh, with their automotive needs. So yeah, that's a, that's a great point from a longevity standpoint, you know, the, the career paths that I have here on my sales floor, um, anywhere from somebody that's maybe been selling cars for two years now to my gentleman that's been selling it for 50 years. So there's, that's a, that's a great career. Right. Well, this, this has really been very informative, Dan. I really appreciate it. And, and I'm sure, like you said, that, that in addition to the ones we, we spent a little bit more time on, there's a lot of support staff and everything else that uh, helps make the whole operation run efficiently, too. Um, if, I don't know if you have any other comments you want to add before we uh, wrap up. or. Yeah, I think in summary... I don't want anyone to ever think of the automotive dealership setting as just sales person or technician. Those are two key components of what we do every day, but there are a lot of different career paths inside the dealership. So if you are a young individual thinking about your future and you really like finances, for example, um, you know, we have, we have a finance department, we have finance managers, they handle the numbers and the contracts and the, uh, 
banks approvals you know there's all of that aspect in a wonderful career with us um, if you are more of a office type setting individual there's there's we have billers and title clerks here that handle processing the paperwork and the little bit more of the the administrative side of things so um, the dealership has a ton of opportunities the automotive industry has a ton of opportunities and if you have grown up liking cars your entire life that's great and there's there's a ton of career paths here but even if you haven't there's still a ton of career paths for individuals that maybe you wouldn't get into the dealership setting because uh, i don't want you to think well I, I don't really like cars no there's a a lot of opportunity here that we do every single day that maybe doesn't necessarily deal directly with the car itself. So right. um, lots of career paths, ranging education from graduating high school to college degrees to maybe some technical programs. Um, but we do a lot of training in-house here as well, whether it's on the service side or the sales side, um, we will take a young individual or, or an, any individual and, and give them the skills that they need and do the training necessary to try to get to anybody's uh, ultimate goal in their career path. So um, that's what we're here for. We're here to help our customers. We're here to help our employees. The West Turk group itself, um, tremendous group. You know, we've been nominated. We actually won best places to work um, in Buffalo for 18 years in a row now. Uh, and a lot of that is all because of the employees that we have in the group. You know, that's something that is voted on by the employees and it's in a survey that is conducted by the staff. So um, you know, and those are across a lot of the different departments that we spoke about and the different careers that are available. Well, Dan, if anybody wants any further information, can they reach out to you? It's what's the best way to get to you or, or the website or yep. My information is on Wester's website. Again, it's Dan Dodge, and my email is D Dodge at Wester.com. And I am here in the store all the time. Uh, you can always just come in and ask for me at any time. We're right on Main Street in East Aurora. Um, but again, you could walk right through the front doors and ask for me. I, I'd love to, to have a conversation, answer any other questions that you may have. Uh, and I can also be emailed anytime as well. Okay. Well, Dan, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Again, it's been very informative and, uh, and I'm sure it'll be helpful to a lot of our students who, who view this. So uh, Absolutely. thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. And thanks to uh, uh, Absolute Care at Aurora Park for their sponsorship and, and Mo too for making this happen. And uh, we thank everybody for, for joining us. And Dan, thank you again. And we hope everybody has a great day today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.